Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, thanks for organizing this good event. Uh, my name is Marco Ferrario. I'm the co-founder of uh, MHS City Lab, and uh, we are uh, a multidisciplinary team. Uh, we are based out of New Delhi, where we operate. And uh, yeah, basically, these are the three principles or the three lenses uh, under which we approach and we see every uh, project or, or study we do. We are also half practitioner and half researcher, and I think this is an important combination because it allowed us to test in the field, get feedback, and then go back to the desk to continue our research. Today I will talk about uh, uh, cell construction. I, I want to present an experiment that we did uh, in New Delhi, and I want also to present what is our way forward for this. Um, this is an aerial image of uh, East Delhi, where you can see in the right corner the formal part of the city and in the center what is not formal. I will not today talk about uh, informality and uh, it's a word that I don't really like, so let's say non-formal settlement. This could be like um, agricultural land that get illegally uh, subplan and sell. Uh, it can be a resettlement colony, it can be a public or um, governmental space that get illegally occupied, etc., etc. So there are very grade of informality if you want to use that word. Still, this is what is the main build construct of Indian cities and many Asian cities, and uh, especially is uh, the main source of, source of housing for uh, low income people. So when we, that's why I called my presentation the real affordable housing, because there, are, there is lots of debate affordable housing, the lack of number, the need for affordable housing, but that's our approach. Uh, we believe that uh, affordable housing is this, and rather than to look at new model to build, uh, work with developer, etc., we should figure out a way to catalyze uh, and, uh, and do better use of this, because of course there are some problems that are intrinsic in this kind of texture. Uh, talking about texture, that's how this settlement looks. Sometimes they are uh, organic, sometimes they are uh, uh, more structured. Um, but again, uh, like these are units that are usually built by um, people within the same community uh, with the very limited uh, knowledge because the, mason, the, uh, the masons that build these houses usually don't have access to formal training. Uh, the homeowner is uh, usually highly involved in this process and uh, so that's uh, the cell construction or incremental bit of, of name that I'm using. <coughs> this is uh, just to show you like uh, regarding the built up what is for instance in Delhi. We have 63% according to, 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 to different data that we cross uh, that is uh, constructed by this kind of housing. And then we went back and say, okay, how is the process that bring this kind of settlement? And uh, it's, there is a pattern that is common, and it's usually like people that start to build their house, then eventually all the settlement reach a stage and they stop at this stage. And uh, then two things can happen. Uh, either the place got uh, demolished and uh, get uh, dismantled by the government, or the other option is that there are incentive, their signal that say that they will stay. So it can be a non-eviction guarantee, it can be a rational car distribute to the people, it can be some politician laying down some uh, piping uh, for water, etc. So people get confident and they start to build. So there is a vertical, uh, uh, now incremental housing. And uh, we see this as an opportunity. We see this as an opportunity to add new units in uh, the context of urban city. And uh, the idea is that let's try to build these new units better than what they are and, uh, and, and, and so. This is a, is a perfect explanation coming from the right to the left. You can see an empty plot, uh, a family that built a temporary units a family that invests more permanent structure, one floor, and then a vertical expansion. This uh, has a problem, like um, the, the, there are two main problems that these people face. One is that uh, they, because the land is, uh, the title is not uh, uh, formal, they can't access formal, uh, formal loan, they can't get like uh, financial, uh, uh, good financial opportunity. So they have to go to money lender, family and friends, etc. 
The other option that uh, is let's talk about is that there is no access to technical assistance. Historically, architect and engineer are not working in this kind of scenario, if not in the context of big slum redevelopment projects. So it's the whole neighborhood that gets addressed, that where, where you have architects working with NGO, with multilateral agency, etc. But what we are thinking is that every family, every single individual should have the right to access technical assistance as a human right, as you access health, education, and so how can we do that? How can we provide to the single the, this, 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 this access, this, uh, this service? If you walk in uh, this, uh, this uh, settlement in India, you see bricks everywhere because that's the reality. Like there is, uh, of course, uh, lots of migration to the city, lot of pressure. Land is very expensive. Again, vertical expansion is one of the problem. Uh, so this is a resettlement colony. It's five year old. This is another one that is 30 year old. And again, uh, like let's think of this as a solution, not as a problem. Uh, that's that's the main kind of uh, concept. Uh, talking about the problem again, uh, here you can see like uh, four stories, massive volume, uh, without any uh, any any uh, structure able to sustain a lateral strength. Uh, these are some crazy stuff that you can see if you walk around. Uh, you really don't understand how they stand, and unfortunately, you witness lots of uh, collapse. Uh, if the collapse are covered by the media, like that one in Dakhov last year or that one in Mumbai, then you, of course, you read about, but there are many small continuous collapse that happen in city like Delhi in this, in this colony. So uh, we, we also try, I'll go quickly through this study that we did to understand how weak are these structures. So we analyze uh, in the center is Mongol Puri, a resettlement colony. Uh, you can see the size compared to the Manhattan Island. Uh, there are about 260,000 people. We took three streets, uh, uh, we, map, we mapped the houses, then we uh, basically built a 3D model uh, according to the three main uh, type of construction. And then just quickly, uh, that's the overall distribution of the strength. So we, we, this is the capacity of the units we study to support lateral force. Just to simplify, when an earthquake comes, he produces lateral force. And uh, over 50% of the house, they have uh, not even 1 20th of what is required by the normative for Delhi. So if an earthquake like Sikkim of Kashmir will happen, uh, that was uh, 0.35 in Sikkim and 0.23 in Kashmir, I don't know what will happen of this place because uh, according to us uh, over 80% of the house will be at risk. So concretely what we try to do, uh, we try to okay, see what it can be done. Uh, we try to first to understand the problem again like uh, uh, this is the case of a former system where uh, uh, a family needs uh, to build a house, go to an architect, an engineer, they get approval by the <coughs> municipality and then they build their house calling maybe a contractor. But this is a case of this settlement. Like the poor people don't even know how to. There is no. There are no architects in this kind of settlement. Again, I want to repeat that they can have a friend that is an electrician, that is a plumber, but there are no architects of engineer. And so that's what's happened. They go to their friends and they build their house themselves. So the mason, the guy that built the house, is the cousin, is the friend, is the brother, etc. How, how we can correct this. Uh, on the two sides also there is a problem that is socio-economic, like for the architect, he's not worth uh, to work for a single family that can't pay more than, I don't know, 20 bucks or something like that. And for the poor people, he doesn't even understand the value that a person like in, people in this room can provide because they never experienced this kind of, uh, of service. So the, that's the other thing that we notice that the construction is currently done uh, poorly, not only to save money, but also for some lack of uh, knowledge. And that's what we thought there was a room to improve this. So the, as you know, as architect, um, the layout of house, it doesn't necessarily cost 
more to be in a way on another. But one way maybe has a much better ventilation, has a much better use of space than the other, and having ventilation make a big difference for some uh, transmitted uh, airborne disease. And the structure, of course, everyone knows that uh, the risk of having a weak structure. So we, we went through some kind of uh, gross mistake that we believe could be uh, address. So we, we design a process for which we provide people, uh, we offer people technical expertise uh, uh, bundled with uh, financial assistance. So we say, okay, you want to build a house, we'll give you the money, we'll give you a loan, but we'll also give you technical assistance. Initially, interestingly, people say, oh, I don't need any technical assistance. So we realized that that was due to the lack of experience on this and we make this mandatory. So it, it was a bit of a forcing them, uh, it was a mechanism of pull of a service, but I think it was, uh, it was successful. So we work in the settlement I present, that's a kind of built environment, and these are like two typical kind of uh, clients for us. People that has only one floor that can be easily demolished and they wanted to add uh, more floors. So they wanted to have maybe two or three floors. So we work with, uh, I think, more than 120 family. We built over uh, 20 units. It was a very interesting and fascinating process. Uh, we start with the campaign of awareness, going to talk with people, and then especially once we identify the structure, we start to talk about the different design with, that we could provide. So we sit with the clients, we spend lots of hours with them, and eventually we monitor the construction. That was the most difficult part. And uh, of course, lots of anecdotes on this, but. Uh, Again, it was a successful process because in the end uh, we really had client calling us to say, hey, I have a friend is building a house, he's already secured the money, can you tell him how to build, uh, how to make the, 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 the column or how to make this lab, etc. And we had also like other Mason that were coming and looking to what we were doing. Of course, they were coming back and maybe implemented half of the solution in the wrong way, but at least it was a show that when people is informed, then they could appreciate this service. This is a couple of houses before and after, not yet plaster, but at least you can see the RCC structure. This is another lady, um, Shoba. This was her house before. And uh, this is the house after, again, uh, in this picture is not yet plaster, but the interior was um, already complete. Now, again, coming back, uh, this was, again, our experiment. Uh, we are uh, now going forward and thinking, like, what can we do? Again, uh, I don't think, like, taking an architect for each of these families is, po is possible. So we are more thinking about uh, midwife for architects and uh, has the, so that the people maybe can't access the doctor but at least as a midwife. And uh, historically midwife helped to bridge a large gap for, uh, for the, 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 like the popolo, for the population that couldn't afford maybe a doctor. In the same way we are thinking how can we bring architects uh, where they've never been and where they're needed the most. So we are taking various steps on this. Uh, the first uh, challenging part is the R&D. That's the craziest and more difficult challenge we have. How can you make a small house standing three, four floor uh, with a footprint that is so little that could be the bathroom of your house? Uh, that's the main issue. And using, of course, the material that are available there, the construction technique there. And unfortunately, in India, for instance, they are using majority RCC and burn bricks. Uh, it's a very difficult mater uh, material to use. Uh, so we are working with the engineer from various uh, country and uh, getting the fund for all this is, uh, is, is very challenging because uh, lots of foundation and, uh, and company, they are happy to work on prefab house or uh, like water and sanitation where you can get output, but where is research, especially on this field with liability uh, issue involved uh, is a problem. But again, uh, that's one thing we are doing. The other thing we are uh, starting to do training session for Mason. Um, and we also like design manuals that could help on this, very illustrate, so even if people is illiterate, they could get and grasp uh, some kind of notion. We are also rethinking the language because when we ask engineer to give us a design, they came up with this kind of uh, drawing that 
you may understand, but definitely uh, like the the homeowners and the technical and the mason don't understand. So we try to reconvert this, uh, reconvert this drawing into this something that could be easy uh, readable using color code to illustrate the different size of the bars, etc. And then we also thought that this could also be done in steps, like a little manual on how to build your house. At least you know that, I mean, you have a certain number of stirrups at the bottom of the columns and less in, in the center and etc, etc. Now we are thinking like, how can we, how can we reach uh, the majority of the people that is building house? Because again, one thing is to do training, one thing is to work with 300 people, but we have millions of people building in India and we want to catalyze all this process. So we are thinking to rely on technology. And one idea is, uh, will be to have, uh, as you can see in this scenario after Facebook, the most download app will be our tick structure before zombie to tsunami, I don't know what. And um, the idea will be like, imagine like that a local mason could just open his mobile that is uh, more and more get um, available even for poor people because Android Chinese one costs like 20 bucks. And maybe just put few data, um, the location, so it could give some background on the seismic zone and little bit about how they want to build. Uh, with the shape and some other data like number of floor and the size and they could receive like maybe uh, indication on how much the house should cost and how much material they should buy because that's one of the limit that they have because they built always rely on the mason they never know how much they will spend and they, they this like is a, is a huge um, uh, service that they really appreciate that's one of giving like an estimation and a bill of quantity or they could uh, even get the drawings so they could get something that give them an idea about how to build the joint and the most uh, and the most uh, the critical part again like some mistake could be correct he will not make the house 100% proof but maybe instead of 1 20th of the strength he will go to half or I don't know, maybe even reaching a decent 80-20 uh, rule where the house could, could, could stand. Um, yes, I mean, it's a huge challenge. Uh, migration continue to happen and is not stopped, so this process will continue wherever we are there or not. Uh, the other pro problem to work with India is that um, you have to work with the government and uh, unfortunately corruption and uh, lack of interest by the leadership uh, that is unexisting is there. That's one old picture of uh, Nehru uh, that was a, a president of India, the first president of India, right? Yeah, Prime Minister of India, sorry, with Le Corbusier, but this thing doesn't happen anymore. Like. There is a lack of experimentation, I think, in the urban sector, uh, in the urban uh, field in general. But in India, like, some, something will be, like, uh, really, really good appreciate. And again, like, this is my email, and uh, we, we need lots of help in this, so anyone can be, feel free to reach and uh, send comments or feedback. Thank you very much.